Hello, ladles and jelly spoons. Um, it's Aegis. And the first thing I want to say in this commentary is thank you. Thank you so much for all of your support, all of your uh, nice comments, and it's only recently been brought to my attention the ratio of likes to dislikes on my videos. Now, generally, my videos get about 20 likes and uh, one to no dislikes, really, which is incredible and... Um, in a tearful sort of way, I want to say thank you, to be honest. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, a quick note on the gameplay. I'll probably refer back to it a couple of times. I um, I die a load thanks to these Russians. They're all being a bit douchebaggy, to be honest. So I decide to go on a bit of a knife rampage with my anti-Russian class. And I enjoy every second of it. Look at this cliche clash. Class. I'll probably type something. Yeah, I think I'm typing something to him. Because all of these games, um, I was just getting more and more frustrated. So this game, I turned the nuke on. I just put it on in my kill streaks, and I thought, why not? If they're going to be douchebags, I'll nuke them if I get annoyed at them again. So that's what I did. Uh, yeah. Um, so that aside, I want to speak a bit about Aegis MU, my second channel, or technically my primary channel, the one I wanted to become my primary channel. And it's been a bit of a disappointment, to be honest, because I hoped that all of my active subscribers would transfer over there and start watching those videos, but I last uploaded a video a month ago and it's got a hundred and something views, whereas if I'd uploaded a, ch a video on this channel and didn't upload anything else for a month, it would have had like 2,000 views probably, which obviously I have you all to thank for. But um, I'm going to leave the link for Aegis AMU in the description. This guy chews me several times and I start to get annoyed. Um, but yeah, and XHD has strikes, and I believe what that means is that um, I can't upload videos longer than 15 minutes anymore. And um, I know most of my friends can upload videos for long that are longer than 15 minutes, and for whatever reason I can't, and I put it down to this strike that I have, and I think after having been on YouTube this long and having uploaded 200 videos on HD, I should be allowed to uh, upload videos longer than 15 minutes, but it really doesn't like it for whatever reason. Um, and that would be especially helpful for my RTC. Look at this guy. He didn't even aim anywhere near me, and he got me with a noob tube. And so I, I was getting a bit frustrated at this point. Sorry for flitting between the gameplay and the notes I have here. Um, so if I was, yeah here we are, anti-Russian. This is my anti-Russian class for all of you who don't know it. It's actually changed a little bit now. It's not got a grenade on, it's got a blast shield to defend me against the Russian tubers, which I kind of like. It's probably the best feature of the class to be honest. Uh, anyway, um, so if I was allowed to upload videos longer than 15 minutes I'd be able to upload RTC episodes that are like half an hour long. And that would be awesome. Look at, the, what the fuck is that? <laughs> this wall spraying. And then, I don't know what I'm going on between um, different classes here, but I eventually end up knifing them all. Um, so, yeah. So, the next part of the commentary, I want to talk a bit about um, what many people refer to as my physics commentaries. And I've only done one of them, really. Um, and so, um, yeah, I want to talk a bit first about religion and what roles and aspects it plays in my life. The main thing... Um, that it does for me in my life um, is, well, it's a big part of my life because my parents, if you didn't know, are both um, preachers or ministers. The Mina Frost had a nice little com commentary, conversation about it the other day and we were talking about um, what what's it mean to have parents who are preachers or whatever and um, he, he couldn't see the uh, job benefit of being a preacher. He couldn't see why someone would want to be a preacher, basically. So, um, look at this guy, Marathon Lightweight Commando. So, yeah, I mirror his class, basically. Um, and so, I thought that um, I should reaffirm it in a commentary. And basically, my parents are both preachers. What they do is uh, go and preach, inverted commas, the word around. And um, that means they spread the word not of Jesus Christ, as most evangelical people would say, but they they um, kind of help, um, I don't know, they, they preach at church. So you've obviously you've probably been to church um, at least one time, probably at Christmas or something. 
and they do the services and um, preach basically so um, obviously having two parents who are both preachers or ministers um, that sort of changed me and changed my views towards religion and I sort of became more accepting of religion and I actually wasn't religious until uh, I stopped going to church uh, I didn't like going to church, I hated going to church, I never go to church anymore I don't don't like it at all and I don't see the point of going to be honest um, but for my views um, that's alright, that's acceptable my parents on the other hand weren't too accepting of it they they wanted me to go to church understandably it's their religion and um, when I when I was of the age that I could decide I stopped going and now I work on Sundays when most people are going to church what the fuck triple harriers um, but yeah my, my views on religion nowadays are more physics based and I'm a I'm a, a physician um, for those of you who don't know I like a lot of physics and I enjoy learning about it I enjoy um, every aspect of physics really except from electricity I don't really like because it's quite difficult but I, I just love physics in general um, so my belief um, or what I know of it so far is that um, is that the universe was created by a photon a photon for those of you who don't know um, is a single beam of light. It's like um, if you turn your lamp on, trillions of photons are beaming out of it per second. And um, I believe that the universe was created from one photon that was so energetic that it created the universe. And in the modern view of physics, it's believed that um, such things as photons can exist for tiny periods of time using the uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle says that anything can exist, um, but the bigger it is, the more energetic it is, the less likely it is to exist, which is kind of a strange principle, and I was very um, scared of it at first, to be honest, because that just doesn't make sense to a normal person at all. And so... It, it would frighten me a bit, to be honest, that um, that sort of thing can exist. Um, and it's a theory that we're a fluctuation in another universe. And you kind of say, um, well, how on earth does that work? How, how, does, uh, how do we exist um, if we're only uncertainty, if, if uh, we are uncertain, if you get my drift? <laughs> but um, I believe that that's how it happened. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, neutron stars, black holes, and dwarves, and stuff like that. So you you can uh, go if you like, uh, but if you if you want to stay and listen to some commentary, I'll probably shove some clips over this. I hope you enjoyed the nuke. Um, but yeah, I, I find physics interesting, so I'm going to talk a bit more about it. Um, we've been doing this lately in physics at school, and that's kind of what I enjoy the most. Really, F physics is my favourite lesson at school. And uh, recently we've been doing about stars in the universe. And um, stars sort of develop uh, in many different ways. But basically they're formed from supernova. No, they're not. They're formed from nebulae, which are, which are like um, massive bunches of gas. And the, the gas sort of starts gravitating itself and then pulls itself in with gravity. And then sort of... Um, forms a star because it ignites because it's under so much pressure from the uh, gravity but when all of the fuels run out they start to burn different fuels and start to explode and burn off layers and if you get a regular star like our sun um, our sun has one solar or stellar mass I think it's stellar mass or solar mass I can't remember which it is I think it's solar um, and um, that would form a dwarf a white dwarf uh, and then a black dwarf after billions of years and um, and a white dwarf is sort of really hot still but it's really small and it's not burning much energy at all and a black dwarf forms billions of years later when it's cooled off um, larger um, stars like I think it's f um, three times Sam correct me if you're watching this Sam Lanning um, three times the size of the Sun might form a neutron star and um, a neutron star is basically a star that's so heavy that it's crushed in on itself and even the protons in the atoms of um, 
each atom in the star, uh, those have been crushed with uh, an electron in the shell of the atom, and they get crushed into neutrons because the gravitational pull is so heavy. Um, but ridiculously, and you'll see why my point of view of religion and how the universe may have been formed uh, could be valid by this. A black hole is formed when a star at least five times the size of the Earth is crushed uh, because of its own gravity. And that much weight, that much weight crushes the star into a point. And I remember um, talking to my uh, teacher in physics and asking him about this. Uh, the point, um, it isn't a point like on a pencil or something. It's literally a point. There's practically nothing there. But at the same time, that point um, is heavier than five suns. And that's a very hard concept to understand. And I obviously still don't understand it. It's, it's ridiculous to me. It blows my mind still. But um, a black hole um, has so m such high gravitational pull that it actually attracts light towards it. Now, everything with the gravitational pull attracts light towards it. You attract light towards it, to, towards yourself. But the light um, is travelling so fast that um, it avoids almost every gravitational pull in the universe. Um, it gets deflected by some heavy objects, but black holes actually pull the light so fast that it's actually drawn into the planet. Not the planet, sorry, the, the centre of the black hole. And um, as gravitational pull decreases with distance away from the black hole um, the at one point on that radius um, a a light particle will not escape it will go towards the black hole and another point just a little bit further away it will be able to escape just um, so that radius is called the Schwarzschild radius and um, no light inside there can escape so no information is known about black holes because we can't see it. We can't see what they're like. Um, and so yeah, I, I just rambled on a bit there. Um, I'm really interested in all that sort of stuff. Uh, leave a comment if you watched to the end, because that's quite cool if you did. If you enjoyed it as well, and if you learned something new, um, I would be very proud of myself, because hopefully, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed. Um, Sam Lanning, hopefully you revised a bit. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the extra gameplay I put over this. I don't know what it will be. Um, but thank you guys for watching. This has been Aegis, and I'm out. Peace. No, wait. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not allowed to say peace anymore, says Zone. So, uh, sorry about that. Um, thank you guys for watching. And, and Can someone suggest an extra, something to go out on? Because I'm... So I'm so bored of saying um, I, it's been Agus and I'm at peace. I need to say something like um, uh, thank you guys for watching um, and goodbye. Vegetable.